temporal arcana is rent here. All of the tears in the umbral arcana here are connected to their puppet master, Pete. You feel the presence of insects, the buildings are covered in horrifying, gross webs, and you see a horrifying wasp centaur woman. The fist on your golden ring glows bright, flame streaks off of your fist, and you obliterate this bug lady's fucking head. <laughs> Yeah. I'm looking through the hole and I'm just like, awesome. The Grand Gata looks over, however, and says, Something is missing from the shells of the bodega. Oh no, did the cockroach take something? You look up and you guys see a shattered piece of glass on the back, and underneath it, it says, written in gold, the key to the city. <gasps> Welcome, one and all, to another episode of The Unsleeping City. We return to find our intrepid heroes. Let's say hi, intrepid heroes. Hi, intrepid heroes! I love it. Uh, our intrepid heroes are in Astoria, Queens, as the dreaming insect folk, these vermians from the realm of Nod, are sucked back through the rent that is stitched together and sealed. The magic recedes from Pete. Uh, those of you still in combat mode, watch as the insects and bugsters all disappear. You arrive in the Irish pub down the block, still somewhat covered in webs as people sort of leave and walk away. Some of you look worse for wear than others. <laughs> to <That> fun night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get on your level. <laughs> uh, uh, you guys all convene in this pub. You begin to hear the noise of people rushing away outside. The Umbral Arcana slowly starts to seep back in. You guys can feel it, those of you who are familiar with it. But you see Sophia very injured and Pete with this kind of wild dream magic receding from his eyes. What do you guys do as you hear the faraway sound of distant sirens? I think I need some uh, some calories in me because I'm a little drunk, so I'm going to see if they have a Guinness. I was so just going to say I'm getting a Guinness. You are kidding me. <laughs> All right. Oh, hey, it's 10 o'clock in the you're morning. Fine. We down, both, you're we we both right? start pouring <laughs> Guinnesses. I'll take a Guinness. We're going to have Guinness. <laughs> All right. No. Do you want one? Stop. 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 Hey, it's drink. Fun. Nobody is drinking this drink. Shut the fuck up, Pete. Pure bagel. No, Pete, what the fuck is going on? What was that? Pete, you caused the bugs? I'd like to slap the Guinness out of no! Pete's hand. <laughs> Pete, what the fuck was that? Look, man, all right, I'll explain. Smack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, I don't know how I caused that, okay? Your guess is as good as mine. And you know what? I just feel like, uh, I, I a had a zoom. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, there are, uh, Please coming, and uh, now we're destroying property. I, uh, I lay on hands you for 15. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Mars, okay. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm doing Is anyone else now. hurt? No, man. I'm good. But if you want to <laughs> Should we lay run, hands to, should we run to that <laughs> bodega? Let's go back to the bodega. And, the absolutely, bodega. yeah, yeah. You yeah. guys rush back to the bodega. Uh, you see La Gran Gata uh, <laughs> on the counter perched. Uh, she looks over at you and goes, Ah, my chosen, you have returned here to the bodega. What, what do you wish of me? She's, Anything you wish. She's so goddamn drunk. This she's is why so the umbrella arcana is she so bowed. important. She bent the I'll knee to a cat. I am your champion, what do you need? I will come to you in my own time, in a way you cannot expect. Walk the streets of this New York City. I will come to you when it is time for you to fight. Okay, I'll be waiting, but not in an impatient, desperate way. You see that the cat leaps up onto your shoulder and nuzzles your face. We'll leave. You can have we a moment. Yeah. 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 What, is, what is happening? You'll wait for the cat? You'll stay? Stay around, stay around, stay around. Her I'm tail back, goes, back. oh, her back, <laughs> hi, it feels almost too good. <laughs> you see, she looks at you and says, Mia, know this. You have a special role to play in the times to come. Okay. You are not the first woman to turn to a cat 
when our marriage has fallen apart. Yes, I know. I'm very aware I'm treading in a <laughs> dangerous territory here. <laughs> but you're going to be my only cat, so. And I will be your only cat, for you have sworn yourself to my service. Uh, the cat disappears. You guys see that your ring and your little compact seashell mirror gleam with light. <gasps> cool. Oh, I offer you a cigarette. Look at how many pages. <laughs> Any other uh, cool stuff? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you guys, the bodega at the disappearance of La Grangata has gone back to a more uh, standard, the gold and ancient wonders have sort of disappeared. Uh, but you're welcome to search around if you want to search around in the bodega. Give me an investigation check. Yes. Um, I'll do it. Sure. 19. If we're all doing oh, it. Oh, nat 20. Oh! Oh! Searching oh! around Finally. a non-magical oh, bodega. Mine is 20, got, but not net. I also got a 19. Hey! Jesus Christ. Uh, do, I, do I get advantage on it now? No, oh, you okay. don't get advantage on okay. investigate. What'd you get? Oh, <laughs> Ricky uh, Matsu. Can I look, can I I look for something way. for Ricky? Uh, uh, yes, you can look for something. I'll say with that nat twenty two, you guys root around. Um, <laughs> yeah, I got a fifteen. I can I can see if I can find something from Mister March over there. Um, <laughs> uh, Mister March, Mister March. <laughs> you guys find a couple of items here. They're not as gleaming and wondrous as they were when the spirit of the cat was present here in the bodega. Uh, you. You find a couple different things. Um, uh, you find Kagrash. You are scooting around. By the way, the bodega owner is still here, kind of <laughs> looking at you guys, scooting around, looking for stuff. Uh, you find an extremely fascinating-looking bagel up in the bagel tray. <laughs> it's an everything bagel, and as you look at the toppings of the everything bagel, it truly really seems like this bagel has Everything that they have got. Is it, is it the bagel of infinite holding? <laughs> <laughs> you can have lots yeah, you, and lots uh, and lots, and it never you scoop doesn't fit. You and you can put whatever you want in it. Um, I don't think any of you guys have an identify spell, so some of these yeah. artifacts are going to be a little bit mysterious. But you find an incredibly potent magical bagel. Uh, oh, well, maybe, maybe I'm magical. Maybe that's my magic. I put my hand uh, on it to identify it. <laughs> Uh, cool. You reach out. Do you have access to the identify spell? Um, you put your hand out, and it's a it's a, a fine bagel. You know, it's not like H and H or anything. I eat this one quick because it's it's good. It's <laughs> right. Don't eat it, man. Yeah. Don't eat it. Hey, gang! Wanted to give a huge shout out to this episode's sponsor, Reroll. Reroll is an app available on iOS, Android, and web browsers that lets you create and customize your D&D characters in pixel art. They have a huge selection of options to create pretty much whatever you have in your mind's eye. And they're adding new armors, items, and outfits all the time. We went ahead to see if we could recreate some D20 characters in Reroll, and they turned out pretty nice. But don't take our word for it. Check it out for yourself by going to reroll.co and sign up for an account at once! And now, back to the show. You also, Ricky's having a hard time finding anything. You also find something up in the little thing of like, uh, of 10 hour energies. You find something that is labeled thousand hour energy. I need that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's a thing called a thousand hour energy. Uh, Ricky, you're the only one I uh, trust not to abuse this. <laughs> oh, Wait, let me just taste no, it, man. Get out of here. Let me just <laughs> taste it. Put it in my like little belt pocket. <laughs> um, uh, Kingston, you find a, a bottle of over by the laundry detergent. Uh -huh. There is something called a Holy Grail laundry detergent. Right. Uh, uh, can uh, I take that over the counter and pay for it? Uh, sure. You see the bodega <laughs> and it goes, oh great, that would be uh, this uh, twelve fifty. Oh. That's a little expensive for detergent. I mean, I'm gonna pay it. I'm just saying. This is premium detergent. This is, <laughs> okay. Like, it's, it's premium detergent. This I is, got it. I, no, you I'm know, gonna it's pay for treat. it. I mean, it's just twelve dollars for detergents. A lot, right? I get <laughs> tied for eight. It's, it's sixty-four loads. Oh, oh. <laughs> I didn't see that. I didn't see it was sixty-four <laughs> loads. Is this HOV? Hand you five no, oh. I don't need anybody's money. I, I can buy this. I hand you five thousand dollars in a while. I, I slap this shit. <laughs> uh, and Pete, you actually find. 
a little holdover from when it was a little bit more golden in here, underneath one of the shelves, you find a chunk of gold <laughs> that you think at first is like a bracelet or something, but then you see it is actually a diamond-flecked golden grill for your teeth. No. Yeah, bitch. Oh, <laughs> God, I hate this. I uh, have been warned about Wait, cultural Pete, appropriation Pete. before, so I will not be wearing this. Uh, you might want to rinse that off pretty... before you put that in your mouth. Yeah, it's just, just I don't know. It doesn't. Yeah, it's fine. Why don't you turn it into it a in necklace? Mouth. I put it in my mouth. <laughs> what, you look, look so cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, I don't know. You pay for it. You guys suddenly hear, as the sirens approach closer, you hear. <laughs> You see Alejandro, Esther, Anna, and Amelia all teleport uh, right outside of the bodega. Alejandro steps in. You see Esther walks out and begins doing something to affect the Umbral Arcana. Anna and Amelia rush over, preparing some kind of enchantment spell as the police close in. Alejandro walks into the bodega, looking at all the carnage and destruction, and goes, what has happened here? Look, man. Pete happened. This yeah. motherfucker can't control his shit. I didn't know. I was in a dream and I let these like bugsters into the real life, but it was a dream. I thought I could just do whatever. I didn't think that it would really happen in real life. What part of your situation remains unclear to you? You are the voice of the dreaming realm. Since you have come here in the past, it is Monday morning. Since Saturday, Santa Claus has been mugged, <laughs> his sled broken. Did you just microdose mm, right no, now? No, no. I'm gonna need you to make a constitution save. It was a regular dose. <laughs> 19. Um, you see that uh, Alejandro uh, raises up to try to like lift you up off the ground with <laughs> telekinesis, and instead you boom, uh, anchor there and everything else in the bodega starts floating around you. Uh, Alejandro looks totally surprised by this magical event occurring, looks back at you. You hear voices in your head start to go, uh, he, shouldn't get to, he, shouldn't, he shouldn't get to tell you what to do. He's just jealous of your power. Let him know what real power feels like. I'm gonna need a wild magic surge roll from you. 14. Cool. Um, what does Pete do? Um. I really like Alejandro. I think I'm ignoring those voices a little bit, so uh, I say sorry. I'm sorry, man. Uh, how do I work on this? <laughs> also, what does this grill do? <laughs> Where did you find that? Found it on the ground underneath a shelf. I was flat on the ground in this bodega. <laughs> you are... Special. A hmm? Sorry, I'm so sorry. You are a race. Sorry. Uh, he <laughs> f t whips his cap off and says, real people's lives are at stake. Okay, okay. You are a, a, a fool. You are a, 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 why do you not seem to care about the real cost of what these actions are? These beings were released into the real world. People died. Uh, Pete hears the voices again say, You owe these people nothing. We can take you away from here. You don't have to be yelled at by these people when they know of your life, your pain, your struggle. There's nothing for you here. I take more acid to quiet the voices. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead and give me another uh, wild magic roll. Great. 18. Uh, cool. You're keeping the magic down as much as you can, um, but you can tell that while you're being yelled at, this is yeah. stressing you yeah. out. And you can feel, while you have control on it, that it's gonna keep being a fight while you're here getting yelled at. Fuck. Can we see kind of what's going on at uh, all? Anyone make an arcana check that wants to. Yeah. Okay. Ugh. Six. Six. Twelve. Oh, uh, uh, twelve. <laughs> uh, you guys, I don't think, can fully see what's happening at this moment. Um, uh, can I, like, crack, pop open the door and say, like, I'm just going to smoke. I'm still listening, Alejandro. Wait, uh, mm -hmm. I want to try to interrupt and, and sure. ask about, uh, and just go up to Esther and uh, tell her that uh, someone took the key to the city. She looks and goes, 
to keep one of the Crown Gata's wonders. Yeah, yeah the, they're uh, going across 59th Street Bridge. Um, you see, she says, okay, um, do, do either of you want to follow them or see if you can track them down? Um, uh, I'll go yeah, for it. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, you guys, uh, are you guys just going to take off or are you going to let them know that you're going? You guys want to go chase this key? I mean, yeah, uh, I'm mean, sure. Can we take your bus? Yeah, you take my bus. Uh, cool. Uh, uh, now, locate object has a range of a thousand mm -hmm. feet. So I'm going to actually need an investigate check from Ricky to see if you can keep up with this thing as it's oh, going yeah. over the bridge. Can I use find steed too yeah. and just like uh, chase after it on my steed? I think you uh, Or is it? Uh, Red, uh, uh, you may absolutely cast. Well, first of all, give me the investigate check to see if you can oh, even yeah. locate Great. where this thing is. Um, okay. I got an 18. 18. Uh, yeah, you sent it heading over the bridge fast, but you're going to have to hoof it. Okay. Um, uh, what about pawing it? <laughs> uh, okay. Cool. Uh, Ricky, you're going to need help chasing this thing down. Uh, how does Ricky summon his steed? Well, I, I just had become a dog, right? And yeah. so I'm feeling this sort of canine energy in me, <laughs> and I know I have to get over there, and I, and I just... I, I, so, so it just calling out to the dogs of the world. <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, you reach out and call to these dog spirits. Uh, you guys see a flash of morning light. The sun coming up. It is about like ten o'clock in the morning, and you see running around a corner this beautiful like red fire hydrant, golden light. Almost like time slows down, and the most beautiful Dalmatian in the world yes. starts running. Uh, begins to rush towards Ricky and leaps leaps up into your arms. I look it back. <laughs> All right. You're my best friend in the whole world. You're my Whoa, best friend. Whoa, we can't talk? <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, that's only Ricky hearing that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so they just can hear Can I hear it too? Yeah, you can hear it too. Awesome. Yeah. You're my best friend. Wait, I need some help finding something right now. A okay. big old key. Big old key. Uh, can I get on your back, or do, do I, can I just run with you? Do, do, yeah. uh, you take off. As you run alongside your Dalmatian, you find that your speed greatly increases as you ha enjoy running alongside your dog. I'm just having an incredible time. Incredible yeah. time. Uh, so Ricky sprints off. I'd like to turn into a dog as well. Just a real busted Dalmatian, though. Uh, <laughs> I follow them. Cool. <laughs> You turn just tongue permanently just out, like, just like jaw up from broken. And oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, you see that your dog looks over at Kagarash and goes, "Something's wrong with that dog." <laughs> He's always <laughs> been like so that. much saliva. It was fun, guys. Cool. Um, uh, you guys, I think, even with the bus, are probably not going to be hoofing it as fast as Ricky and his dog and Kagarash are. Um, uh, does anyone else Back. join them, or is it Kagrash and Ricky peeling off to go chase them? Uh, can I talk to uh, I'm Alejandro? Yeah, you see Anna and Amelia kind of handling the cops. Esther and Alejandro both look very kind of serious and downcast as you guys are in the bodega. Um, uh, also, by the way, I will say, you, as you guys take off, it's 10 a.m. Monday morning, so, like, Ricky, your, like, shift <laughs> starts in, like, an hour and a half. Oh. And wow. Kingston, you've just, you know, like you have like rehearsal and stuff coming up. Yeah, I gotta get to work. You gotta get to work. Uh, it My seems, schedule's open. Yeah, congrats is always open. <laughs> um, uh, and yeah, and Pete, you uh, you step outside to smoke, so you're really out in front of the bodega. Um, so this is, I think, Esther, Sophia, Kingston, and Misty. Uh, and Alejandro are all in the bodega still. Yeah, I think if they're safe, I'll, I'll just chill in the bodega. Cool, yeah. awesome. Alejandro looks over at you, Kingston. <sighs> this is very bad. Tell me about it. <laughs> I am... Listen, Pete is a troubled young man. Mm -hmm. He's very, very cool. I like the kid a lot, but this, <laughs> my man, you gotta, which one, what flavor? Oh, this is, um, oh, this is melon, passion fruit, uh, guava. Why not you even ask? <laughs> you know what? But no, you, I mean, you're right. I like the kid, but this is, this is bad stuff. <sighs> Perhaps we should, uh, we have 
plenty of work here trying to clean up this mess and restore the Umbral Arcana. Maybe it would do for us to meet later tonight and have a discussion about what is to be done. I got a bunch of leftover salad at my place. If you just wanna... Did that keep? I mean, uh, it's salad. We can probably get a we can, it's, we can get a day out of salad. <laughs> sorry, sorry to interject. I'm pretty sure I was good with the Tupperware before we left. Okay, great. Sorry, I, I'm out. I'm gone. Okay, sure. We can come by and have some salad at your place. Great. <laughs> you know, Alejandro, I think they have discontinued those fruit flavor jewel pods. So, you know, maybe you should stock up on them before they disappear. Okay, nobody needs to be stocking so up you on know. them. Really? Yeah. Oh. The kids were smoking them. They well, were like they are... chocolate banana flavored. There's a chocolate mm. banana flavor? Yeah, probably. Oh, that rules. I'm, sorry. I'm gonna show you pictures of popcorn lung when you come over my place tonight. <laughs> I'm gonna show you pictures of popcorn lung and you're going to re-speak. I am 92 years old. A little popcorn <laughs> lung is not a bad way for me to go out and this tastes so good. You okay. can smoke it inside, it's just vapor. Okay, you cannot smoke it inside. Laws are changing. Okay, stop, stop. stop. Can I look over <laughs> at the owner? A flock of smoke <laughs> of vapor pigeons flies out of his mouth. All right. Um, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, so you got, what's Pete doing outside as he's like catching up with himself? I think I'm just like kind of pacing and like angry. Uh, yeah, um, your phone lights up uh, with a little text from Priya. Great. <laughs> uh, cool, I, I read it. It does not address any of the things in your wall of text to your ex. Uh, it says, what's your schedule like today, question mark? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I write back, uh, I'm free before uh, 5 p.m. Uh, a response back, uh, splendid. Do you think we could grab a quick cup of coffee? Wanted to talk to you about us. I leave it on red for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> Vicious. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, wonderful. Uh, you also have some like messages from Seven. You also have like been sleeping in Kingston's place, and yeah, yeah I, I really want to check in with my um, my like criminal network and see if anyone knows who Robert is, or like do some investigating instead of meeting up with him. Awesome. Do you want to send those questions over electronic messaging, or do you want to be like, hey, let's meet up and talk and ask them in person? I want to make a make a couple stops and ask some people in person. Cool. So I think Pete, you just dip. Okay. Um, uh, Pete dips. Uh, I only look in through the window and say bye to Kingston. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, Sophia sees this and is really hurt. <laughs> I, I feel bad, but I just didn't want to talk to Alejandro I look at the, again. I look at the cigarette that you gave me. I'm like, I guess it meant nothing. <laughs> do, I have, do, I have so, do I have Sophia's number? Yes, I think you have Sophia. I text like, had to dip, bye, Sophia. Okay, I instantly feel great. <laughs> uh, incredible. Um, we'll cut over first. 18 is awesome. So, Ricky, you are sprinting at the pace of a full running dog. For the city. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just like whip across the 59th Street bridge with these two Dalmatians. You've got the gleaming axe in your hand. Uh, you rip across the bridge. Uh, 18, you manage to keep this. You're like, sniffing out this key yourself. Uh, you get a little message from Esther. It actually is like a magical message out on your phone. Uh, she says, the key to the city is a very powerful magical artifact. Its signature should be easy to read. There are certain pockets in the city that are dead zones where things are hard to divine or scry. Try to get it before you get to one of those dead zones. Um, I'm gonna need, for these sort of like running checks, I'm actually gonna need constitution checks from you and your dog to like set the pace and keep up and cool. from Cugrash as well. Are these like saving throws or just straight up? They're actually oh. checks, nothing okay. bad's happened cool. to you. It's about you f full speed running after a vehicle trying uh -huh. to catch up with it basically. Cool. Uh, 11. <laughs> Natural three. Okay, go ahead and give me a roll for uh, your steed as okay. well. I don't know what I would what add to that, uh, By the way, what's the, what's the name of your wonderful sweet dog? <gasps> oh, um... You can take a moment to think about it if you yeah, want. Yeah, but... I'll, take a, I'll take a second. 
Oh my god, I can't wait for you to debut it. Uh, can't wait for that debut. <laughs> and then for the mount, I, I, I rolled a 15. And do I add my constitution to that? Uh, you would add it, which is plus one. Okay, so 16 for that. Cool. Uh, your, the, your magical dog, magical Dalmatian is, is keeping up. Um, Kyle Rash, you have a hard time. Your lungs, <laughs> you've been... Uh, <laughs> broken jaw. Uh, Come on, Kug. Ah, <laughs> you're fucking so fast, kid. You stupid magic dog. God damn it. I hate my goddamn life. <laughs> Why did I follow you? You're in such good shape, god you're damn looking it. looking great. It's awesome fuck. to exercise, man. Ah, fuck you. <laughs> fuck. Oh. Ah. Kug Rush, you're hurting. It's a hard time <laughs> keeping up. Uh, Ricky, you could probably keep up with the car, but you'd be leaving Cog Rash behind. It's fine, fuck me, go, goddamn it, <laughs> you <laughs> stupid <laughs> kid, go, you goddamn beautiful boy, you fucker, you absolute asshole. You really? Are you, are you okay? Go yeah. fuck yourself, Ricky. Right. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Ricky, you are just sprinting. <laughs> just like, with, just like, like the awnings of delis and storefronts and the little umbrellas of hot dog carts, like, <laughs> flutter in the wind as you. You just sprint down the street. Uh, your dog is like just like running beside you. Oh, I just thought of, the dog's name is Ox. Ox. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He goes, yeah. A U X. Ricky. Yeah. Ricky, this is the like best time in the world. You're my best friend. I love You're to. My best friend. I love to help. You're helping me a ton. Uh, <laughs> fuck you. That's incredible. Uh, Animal control has yeah, descended on you. Uh, <laughs> great. Um, calling nine one one about a I strange dog. I also need dog. you to weirdly actually make a stealth check for me as you catch up on the vehicle to see if it doesn't spot you. It was in a car. car. Mm. How could nobody spot this hot man and his beautiful dog? I uh, rolled a twelve. Okay, I'm gonna make a little roll back. Wait, here. People are What's already Instagramming him, and he's famous. Oh, he's but do I Hashtag trending on Twitter. For, uh, yeah. You have disadvantage on stealth. Okay, so, shit. Okay, so 10. Okay. Oh wait, no, seven, fuck. Gotcha. Um, uh, you have disadvantage uh, on stealth, why? Because uh, of plate, I guess. Uh, 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 Ricky has the effect of plate armor, oh. which normally gives you disadvantage on stealth, but we're saying that Ricky's just doesn't have plate, but has the armor class, and doesn't have the disadvantage, but is too hot, so it's hard People to be stealthy. Uh, his, yeah. his, his, like, muscles, he has so much bulk. He's got them big, that, like, makes so hard. Yeah, he's already fully trending like, on, like, online. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna say a bunch of people, uh... Yeah, posted are people, like, cheering? Running. Running. Hashtag, Hashtag running with dogs. Hashtag Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, <laughs> uh, like, Misty, you're, like, on your way out of the bodega, you look at your, like, your social media, and there's, like, an incredible thing of, like, ooh, March and December, what's this <laughs> hashtag? <laughs> ooh, ah! Mr. March is <laughs> Just a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of incredible things. Uh, uh, I'm also going to make a little roll back here real quick. Uh, you see that as you're running, Ricky, while you're sprinting down the street, there are a lot of opportunities. Like someone's like baby stroller almost goes out into the street, and you like <laughs> push it back against them. Someone like, oh, I'm dropping all these pies. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Mr. March! <laughs> Smells great. <laughs> uh, just Freaking. another perfect day for the luckiest, hottest man in New York. Um, uh, cool. Tom Cruise's characters are all based on him. <laughs> yeah. He's just following behind, like, how can I do this? How can I bring this to my next role? Uh, incredible. I barrel through all of these people 15 minutes later. <laughs> and you ruin you everything. You pies. kick the baby, you crush the pies. Jump over oh, the baby. Sorry, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, Ricky, give me one last investment. Investigate check. Okay. Come on. Oh, fuck. Uh, what's my investigation? Okay, five. Five. Yeah. Cool. You, you rolled a lot of really great rolls in a row. You <laughs> sprint uh, up down through Manhattan. You get up onto the FDR, going down the East River, running in between cars. You get all the way down to the financial district. As you get there, your divine sense tingles a little bit. You're down on Wall Street, and it is busy down here, but there is a faint aura of death around this place. Your locate object spell goes blank and kind of disappears, and you see that Ox kind of huddles up behind your legs and crouches down. Come here, come here. <laughs> Big dog jumps up in your arms. Just looking around, holding my Dalmatian. <laughs> like a giant oh baby. Uh, Everybody in the world has heard of you now. 
Something's off. Oh, here. this beautiful man is holding a huge dog. Ellen is on the phone, being like, well, "What are you up to this we week?" We need him. We need him here. I, I, uh, I take a selfie with the dog uh, and send it to Esther. Like, made it to the financial district. Something's off here. Smells like death. Um, how are you? <laughs> uh, she responds, "Very busy at the moment. Thank you for the update. Do, uh, uh, you, with that five, lose the car here." But you do have a sense of the five or six block area where you kind of had line of sight. You're like, couldn't have gotten that far, couldn't have gotten that far. So there's a couple blocks or buildings where you think it probably landed or could mm. be in this area. And it's the center of like Wall Street, like from like, you know, Trinity Place in the church down like down Wall Street a couple blocks, down to like Stone Street, maybe up to like Gold Street on the other side. There's like this couple of block radius. Uh, but these are high rise buildings and it is like a war and like a hive here of different places and buildings and companies and stuff like that. Okay. Did he ever see the van or was he just following Never it? Never got close the enough. Uh, I don't think any none or of your investigate checks vehicle beat was. a twenty. I don't think. Right. I don't think no. so. No. So you never got you never actually got full line of sight to the vehicle, but you mm -hmm. sensed it with your spell. Um, okay. Uh, well, you, mm -hmm. I, uh, I I guess I start a group text. <laughs> I don't know if we have one going. Uh, Pete's on an Android, so it's yeah. all <laughs> green. Yeah. Hey, I don't fuck with Apple. Okay, <laughs> all you sheeple. Yeah. Uh, made it to the financial district. I don't see it anymore. There's something wrong here. Um, uh, wonderful. And then you uh, you get a text from the fire chief, Kevin, being like, uh, hey, Rick, just making sure you're coming in today. Uh, I just text him back uh, on my way. Um, and then just one last look and then head out. Woo! You see Ox jumps down, starts walking yeah. along beside you. <sighs> um, Ox, uh... You're, you've been great, and I'll see you soon. But you can go be light, I guess. Okay, if you want me to be light, I can. Do you want me to go be light? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Expands and like diffuses into light. <laughs> I, uh, I run to the fire station. Um, cool. Uh, you go to the fire station. Uh, for those that are leaving the bodega, um, uh, what are you guys up to go do? Obviously, some of you have. Yeah, I, I yeah. have to go to rehearsal, which I have not been to for. Well, everybody can get on the bus, and the bus can drop people off wherever they need to be. Cool. Uh, oh, and by the way, I was talking to Willie last night. Mm. He said the Lazarus we might be looking for might have something to do with the Statue of Liberty or something like that. So. Um, no, it. God damn it! I'm stupid. What? It's Emma Lazarus. It's not Lazarus from the Bible. It's Emma Lazarus. Who is that? Emma Lazarus wrote the poem. Which poem? On the, po the uh, bring me your tide, your poor, your huddled masses. You need to break free. Wow. If I may interject, uh, have you guys considered maybe it's both? That maybe they're like some kind of like I'm saying like meta duality it, of Lazarus. I'm references? saying Lazarus rose from the dead. Emma Lazarus is all about immigration. What if the what if they're using the thing to launder the souls to sort of uh, give uh, give these souls a second chance in heaven? I think it's possible. I, I'm really worried about anything that wants to break free. Mm. Well. well, I just wanted to. Emma Lazarus, though, fun. She was a fun lady. Oh, I believe it. Oh, wow. You know, she was fun. Um, wonderful. You guys head off to your various places of employ. Um, uh, the only people that, so you guys all go to work. Uh, Misty, you arrive at rehearsal, you walk in, Pear looks up at you and goes, <laughs> Well, um, Ms. Moore, hello. I'm excited for you to grace us with your presence. Um, uh, shall we go ahead and uh, uh, get it started? I love to get it started. I perfectly fucking word perfect, note perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead and give me a performance. I'll give you a performance check. Oh. Please roll low. Please roll low. Oh, yeah, I want you to roll low too. Sorry. <laughs> um. This is, is this a dexterity performance? No, this is a regular This is a regular check. performance. I got a 13. A 13! She has a plus um, 10 in performance. I have a plus 10 That's in performance. Crazy. I did roll Whoa. a 3. Oh, wow, okay. Wow, plus so 10. you 
go through this rehearsal. There's all these people dressed in these like crazy fairy getups. It's like th this like high schmaltzy Midsummer Night's Dream. Perry goes like, all right, from the top, people. Uh, you launch into the song and uh, you, how do you navigate through a 13? Because it is not going to be word perfect. <laughs> um, I get through the first verse and a half and then I just start yelling line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I'm like, the, the beat is off. There's something off with this. Who, is this a new pianist? I feel like the beat is off. Um, this is what we're doing. A you, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, this is where uh, we need to. You be. see that uh, uh, your your piano accompanist <laughs> Benjamin looks up at you and says, "I'm so sorry. The beat is off. <laughs> Someone help me figure this out." You see that the, the drum looks over and says, um, "Yes, I. If the beat." If the beat was off, then I then I'll do it different. I'll do it differently for you, Ms. Moore. Pick it up. Pick it up. I I will pick it up. We're I singing guess. a very slow ballad. <laughs> 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 um, uh, at the end of rehearsal, uh, you see that uh, Perry comes over to you and says, "Misty, darling, I am sweetheart, so, oh, angel. <laughs> you are." a vision, oh. and I'm wondering if there is anything I can do to oh. make sure that... The, the show as a whole, I mean, that is your job. No, certainly. I guess what I'm asking is... I just love your vision for this whole play. I just think you're doing a great job. Thank you. The flowers look wonderful. Bottom's head is so expressive. Um, you see that uh, Alyssa, your assistant, comes up and goes, um, hi, Miss Moore, so sorry to bother you. Mm. Um, I picked up these different um, uh, leaves of holly and a couple other things. You wanted some salt and some other, these like little sure, silver. Sure, sure, we don't need to do this now. <laughs> but you wanted uh, me to sort of build yeah, no, some little things. I'm having a conversation with my, my friend here. I am so sorry. Just bring him to my apartment. I'll deal with it then. I am so sorry. I'm very so sorry. This yeah, no, I know you're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this this is will, so painful. This will <laughs> never happen again. No, it won't. <laughs> She turns around and just broken, like shambles off. Um, uh, Perry looks over you and says, Missy, there is nothing more important to me than your health and well being. Mm. So you let me know. If you're not feeling up to it... Darling, I've never felt healthier. I mean, look, 800 is the new 20, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm not you're that old. I know, you're being cheeky. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Let's take it again. Um, <laughs> and you get back into rehearsal. And then Cogrash, uh, what are you up to? Uh, I feel like... <laughs> I, I get to the financial district way, way, way after Ricky has left. Um, and it's daytime, right? It's, it's like kind of early? Yeah, it's like Monday morning. I would like to, um, hopefully my son David is at work. I would like to swing by his house to see if I can't find something. Uh, wonderful. Uh, his house is uh, he lives way out in <laughs> in Forest Hills. Okay. Um, so you can probably you can scurry out there. Yeah. You got we'll nothing else going on. I'll take yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you scurry out or take a ferry. Take a ferry uh, down to Red Hook. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So you you take the ferry to Red Hook. You get out there. However, you get there. Um, go ahead. Um, when you get there, make a little stealth. I would like to do pass without trace of myself. Awesome. Oh my God, 32. Jesus Christ. With, with uh, yeah, I'm gonna say also probably like you shift into like an actual like yeah, 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 yeah. I'm being I'm myself again. Um, you do that, you know rats can fit through any opening their skull can fit through because they're cartilaginous. So you like- Jesus, I didn't know that. You yeah. like get in under like a door, like through like a, a rain gutter, like. Uh, and there's this lovely little house. This is Forest Hills, so these are like one-story houses out here. You're way out in Queens. This is like the kind of Peter Parker kind of neighborhood out here. Uh, you... Looks like he's through. done well for himself. <laughs> Start <laughs> sobbing. Um, you squish through. Um, uh, you get in, 
You see uh, your daughter-in-law uh, is home right now. She's working out of her home office. Um, and your grandchildren are not here. They're at school. Uh, but you see that they're up above the little fireplace. There is a little soccer trophy. And uh, you see there's like a little plaque or something having to do with uh, uh, someone getting a first place in a science project. <laughs> so goddamn proud of those kids. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I could talk to them. Uh, then I would like to, I guess, see if I can find uh, David's office and see if I could find my old, like, financial records or anything like that. Look for stuff about, like, Robert, because I'd worked with him before. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, go ahead and make an investigate check for me. Oh, God. <laughs> Nat 20! Yeah! Yeah! Oh, that's a good Baby. one. Okay, okay. Just so inspired by my grandchildren's yeah, um, yeah, first oh, place. Yeah. I need to be good at things now. <laughs> um, uh, incredible. Uh, you scoot around. Uh, your son David is a lawyer who works for financial watchdog groups to basically hunt down and prosecute white collar criminals. Um, mm -hmm. Yep, yep, <laughs> this is good. This is good. Uh, you see that there are a number of files in his sort of home desk office area. And there's a closet with a bunch of those kind of legal files. You know, like a lot of legal stuff is still done in paper. And there's a bunch of those cardboard like legal file boxes, file folders and stuff like that. You see stuff in the back that's been taped up. And you see it says on it, uh, Bruce Kugrich on it. Uh, which is your name. There's a lot of files on there. Um, you open it up, start to go through your files and everything like that, uh, and you see a lot of financial information here. You go back through a lot of deals. There's a bunch of stuff about your old hedge fund, a lot of stuff about the deals you made. There's some stuff there. You see signatures like your signature. You also see signatures from Gabriella Sinclair. As you go further and further through these files, you arrive at deals where you remember something being made with this group that had a long name in it. Uh, but, hold on one second. Sure. Sobbing the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Such a Just a little, little tiny rat. rat like, yeah, a tiny rat him. lifting up a file like this. Stealing, <laughs> stealing from my son. Yeah, just imagine. I guess technically like, this is mine, so it's not stealing, but it feels like stealing. <laughs> my booger's getting caught Absolutely in all your fur. Yeah. 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 I need another perm. <laughs> you find a file with financial information in it from an old, old money group to the kind of where, you know, they didn't even like take meetings. They like called you to come in and take meetings with them, right? Uh, called O'Neill, Dwyer, Burns, and Moses. And as you say that, you suddenly remember being at a party back in the 80s where you saw that guy, Robert, and heard someone refer to him out of the corner of your ear as Mr. Moses. Oh, fuck me. Uh, go ahead and make a, with that nat 20, make a, a history check okay. with advantage. Uh, do, 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 14. You suddenly think back, Robert Moses, is a figure of New York history. And as you suddenly realize that you never got that guy's first name, and now you got it here from Pete, uh, Robert Moses is a powerful historical figure within the history of New York. Uh, with the 14, you remember that he uh, 
was not only just sort of a businessman, but also had a lot to do with like the civic life of New York. He was part of a lot of, never elected, but was part of a lot of government boards, had a lot to do with the building and infrastructure of New York, specifically a lot with the building of roads and highways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Causing interference in the magical world. Highway hicks. Uh, you also find in these boxes back here, on top of the last box in this closet, you see there is a little envelope that is closed but not sealed, and it says, uh, to Dad on it. I read it. God damn it. You open this letter up <laughs> and start to read it. Dear Dad, I don't expect this letter will find you before my funeral, which I would hope that you had the decency to come back to. I don't know where you are or why you left. Having raised a family of my own, I can tell you that it takes a lot of bravery to steer kids right in this world, and so I'm not surprised that you couldn't hack it. Because I can't tell it to your face, I'll say it to you here. Thank you. Thank you for showing me the type of person in this world that you need to devote your life to stopping. I've spent my life's work raising kids, being a good husband to my wife, and making sure that people like you who hurt people for profit face consequences for it. I think I've come to terms with what you did to me. I'm strong enough that this is something I won't let stand in the way of a happy and good life for myself. What you did to Wally, I can never forgive because he needed you. Hope this letter finds you well and in good health. For all you've done, I still wish you nothing but the best. And know that everybody has a chance to turn their life around. I don't think I'll ever live to see yours, but here's hoping. David. <sighs> I leave the letter because I'll remember it. <laughs> oh. Jesus Christ. <gasps> Brutal. Fuck me. <laughs> Fuck. Such a goddamn rat. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, you finish the letter and put it down, and there's a soft silence as this furry little rat uh, stands in this little closet full of these financial reports and papers, and you hear uh, a car pulling up into the driveway outside. I leave. You sneak out the back, afraid to see who's probably coming in the front door. Um, we'll go from Kagrash to... Ba -ba -bum. Uh, We'll head over now to uh, Kingston. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Uh, what's going on with Kingston as he gets over to St. Owens? I mean, I just, I guess I gotta get through the day. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I think it's like a very like a head down kind of day mm -hmm. uh, at work. Hell yeah. Um, you're getting through your day there at work. Um, uh, you see that Emiko is there. She smiles. She says, Have you seen this crazy shit on Instagram? What? What is that? Uh, March and December. What? Wow. It shows you uh, a bunch of stories of Ricky running and like waving at people and catching, like falling, <laughs> and, you know, like uh, as he like sprints through the city. Oh, that boy is crazy. Get that boy in the bachelor. I swear. <laughs> um, like accidentally flexing. You see, she looks and says, I don't get what there's. It's just all these thirsty women online, and a lot of thirsty men as well, and I don't understand why he won't let me set him up with my fucking friends. Is he not, is he, he's not 
I've assumed he is dating thousands of people. <laughs> I don't think so. I also don't know when he would. He works out two hours a day, cardio and resistance, mm -hmm. gets nine hours of sleep, and works a full firefighter job, and then also has this weird hobby he wants. He's part of like a, what, like a Gramercy, there's like something in Gramercy he does. I don't oh, know. Oh, 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 cool. Uh, <laughs> something yeah. cool in Gramercy. That's a cool part of town, right? There must be interesting things going down. I guess so. Uh, but that's very, he's not dating anybody. Uh, no, not that I know. Hey, I mean, people's people. Yeah, you're not wrong. Um, you get a uh, call on your phone while you're at work. Uh, who is it? An unknown number. I'll pick up. Uh, is this uh, Mr. Kingston Brown? Yes, and who do I have the pleasure of speaking to? Um, this is uh, Officer Epona Cirillo. Um, oh, what's up, Epona? How's it going, Kingston? I'm good. How are you? Uh, listen, we're uh, working with the DA's office down here, mm -hmm. uh, and we're looking to collect a testimony from you, and uh, we have no way of reaching uh, Kagrash, and we don't have Misty Moore's uh, number on file, but mm -hmm. basically anyone who was a... Uh, a witness to the events of uh, Santa Claus's assault in mm -hmm. the park. Uh, we'd love you to come down to City Hall today if you can. We'd love to get a testimony from you. Uh, you want me to bring everybody or you want me to just come by myself? We'll take whoever we can. If you have those other people that were with you, anyone that saw it, we'd love to try to track them down, but we can also collect that information from you down here at City Hall. Okay, great. Uh, cool, um, uh, what does Kingston do? I guess I'll head down to City Hall real quick. Great. Um, you head down to City Hall. Um, as you head down there, you walk in and uh, you see that Epona greets you. Mm -hmm. City Hall, massive building, see the golden statue on top, huge stone steps everywhere. Um, Epona leads you up these stone steps, meets you up front. Ah, Kingston, thanks for coming down, well, I appreciate of, it. Of course, Epona, happy to do my civic duty. Um, she clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop, with her centaur hooves up the stone steps. Hey, does that ever get annoying to you? What? The sound of your own feet. <laughs> like the fact, no, nah, nah, I'm and this and I, it's, I don't, it's, I don't find it annoying personally. I'm just at, like it's an interesting thing. It's like you know, because when I put on like nice shoes and I hear like the tip tap, tip tap, like I'm, all, I like that, but I, I don't, I don't wear nice shoes all the time. So it's like, for you, clip clopping all the time. Is it clip clopping? Is that offensive? <laughs> I'm just trying to be respectful. Hey, you know what? I, I understand. Um, I'm just trying to understand you better, you know? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I'm going to be honest with you. First of all, I don't have feet. I have hooves. Okay, my right? bad. So that's all right. You, I mean, that's okay. Uh, second of all, you know, I'll be honest yeah, it's a little annoying. It's oh. a little bit annoying because it's a reminder that, you know, this, listen, this city is not built for me. You want something for that? I could probably get a guy to make, like, a soft shoe, like a soft horseshoe. I'd probably find a guy for that. Yeah, you know, I'm good, Kingston. I appreciate okay. that. I really do appreciate that. <laughs> you ever uh, want a soft horseshoe, you let me know, okay? <laughs> Fucking add Jordan's yeah. first sentence. I don't know, you know, I don't know what kind of flubber horseshoes you're talking about here, but uh, these, these horseshoes are fine. Um, okay. Uh, you see that she leads you to City Hall. Uh, as you go in, you see there's a bunch of like metal detectors there. You see that there is, you know, they're gray and kind of those beigey metal detectors. And there's one metal detector at the far end that has a tiny little goblin in like a clerk's uniform that uh, it's like crazy, like sparkling lapis lazuli and amethyst. Like, mm -hmm. hey, uh, how's it going? Uh, what? She says, Epona, uh, oh, is this a guest of yours? She says, yeah, uh, we're going into the uh, 17th circuit. And he goes, ah, all right, right down here. Um, uh, leads you through. So are you carrying any uh, firearms, weapons of any kind, flammable liquids, spectral entities, uh, souls, memories, dreams? Uh, none other than my own. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes people, you you stepped on my joke there, because sometimes uh, people yep. say, I don't I know souls, and I'll go, oh, no, <laughs> I'm not even your own. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's great. That's great, man. That's good. Great minds, huh? good. That's right? good. That's a good one. That's uh, good. Uh, right. next, time, next time I'll let you have that one, all right? Uh, yeah, yeah, let me, don't step on it next uh, time. Yeah, I won't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you go through, beep, beep, um, and you see that uh, you walk through, your opponent steps around. Um, she leads you to a small room, um, and she actually looks at you and says, uh, as Vox Populi, mm -hmm. um, we don't have to actually swear you in because everything you say is 
uh, legally speaking, uh, and admissible testimony and evidence. Mm -hmm. However, if you would like to be sworn in, we're happy to do that. Is there something you'd like to be sworn in on? Uh, can I take off my eternal token mm -hmm. uh, and give it to her? Um, you see that she nods. Uh, in your, she like wraps your hand around it and says, uh, Kingston Brown offering testimony on behalf of the city of New York. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, to the best of your ability? Of course. Wonderful. Redundant, but here you go. She steps into one of those like mirror rooms where you see a lineup. Um, you see there is a lineup of a giant, massive like tree with a face up against the height thing. A weird, like look what looks like a mound of human excrement with eyes and a mouth. Like a like an emoji? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like, same thing. yeah, it looks like a weird, horrifying poop emoji, but its eyes are all yellow and jaundiced and very bloodshot, like it just woke up. <laughs> and uh, you see that there are two extremely tough, tattooed little pixies. They have like tattoos, like undershirts, like tank tops. Uh, and then standing the fifth person in the lineup is a human <laughs> who just is looking around extremely confused. Um, you see the opponent asks, um, uh, Mr. Brown, mm -hmm. uh, did you witness any of these individuals within the vicinity of the sleigh when you were adjacent to it? Uh, no, I did not. Okay. Uh, can you point to any of these people that you recognize from personal affairs? Uh, I mean, I text sometimes, so I do recognize the... <laughs> excrement with eyes is the poop emoji? Or at least that's what the kids call it. Um, you see, it says that's a, it's very uh, funny, but uh, that's a, just a normal um, excrement. A normal what? <laughs> a normal excrement elemental okay. from the sewers. So, yeah. but. Well, that's Cugrash's business, <laughs> not mine. Uh, uh, you can get Cugrash down here. This guy actually asked for a lawyer, and when we <laughs> offered a public defender, it said wanted Cugrash. Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay, I'll make sure he knows about that. Uh, that would be great. But I do, I was at a, the confetti wedding on Sunday, and uh, Don had told me that those two boys, uh, the tough-looking pixies, that they were, had... We should hold the testimony for the DA. Oh. Uh, if you want to come with me, that'd actually be great. Oh, great. Um, you walk into a side room, you see that that uh, big thing as shit goes... Uh, Cug, your whatever little device you have is like blowing up. Uh, I'm gonna leave you alone, you piece of shit. <laughs> I'm gonna bear just reading the note again. Uh, <laughs> shit, it's next to me. Uh, yeah, you see, I don't know how you have this saved. This is Buddy, is what he asked to be called, um, but I don't know if you had him saved that way on your phone. Um, uh, uh, cool. So. Um, <laughs> I feel like you have 18 different buddies in your yeah. family. Yeah. Yeah. Buddy. Buddy. Just call me Buddy, man. Different numbers different of, of wives. wives. Yeah. Yeah. Buddy. <laughs> you walk into a side room. You were seated at a comfortable wooden table. Opponent goes, hey, is there anything you uh, you want here? Like to you know, like eat, drink, drink coffee? You want something else? I'll just take a, I'll take a glass of water. A glass a of water. Lime. Um, she walks out to go get a glass of water for you. She walks back in with a glass of water, and right behind her is Liz. Oh, come on. Uh, Liz Herrera walks in. She clearly knows who she's going in to talk to, so she has her game face on. She sits down, looks at you. Mr. Brown, thank you for coming in today. My you name is Liz. Call me Liz. You gonna call me Mr. Brown? Okay. <laughs> okay. Are we gonna do this? No, we're not gonna do. It. Yeah, no. <laughs> Are we gonna do this? No, Mr. Brown's ready to talk. I'm at work. <laughs> so the thing with me here, Kingston, is that I'm at work right now. Okay, but. <sighs> Okay, I'm See, Epona puts the water down and says, I'm going to fully go. I'm gonna go. <laughs> uh, she steps out. Uh, you see that Liz turns a recorder on and keeps her voice professional, but is just fucking staring daggers at you. So, Kingston, it's, it's my understanding that you attended the wedding of Angela Confetti to Ronald Pigeon. Yes, I was on a date with Misty Moore 
to the confetti wedding on Sunday. Click. Fuck no, you. No, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck yourself. All right, you know what? I don't want to do this. I and always I... knew there was something I weird with her, you and her. She's wanted to fuck you for years. Yeah. I know it. You're such a piece of I shit. I never fucked you her. You are I such never... a fucking don't dog. Don't even do this. You know? You're telling me you were faithful voice to the city. I am faithful. I was faithful. I would have continued to be faithful. It wasn't a date. I just... I'm... I'm mad, okay? <laughs> it was, uh, we just, we were going there because there was some stuff going, there's been some stuff going on with the whole Santa Claus thing, and yeah, it was business. I don't know why I said it was a date. Business. So what, so the, the mummy's back or something? No, the mummy's not back. It's, something's going on with Nod. Nod, refresh my memory, that is... It's the Sixth Borough, it's the Dreamland. It's, I don't know, there's this new kid on the block named Pete, who I guess is the Vox Phantasma. He's me, but for them... Ah, uh, anyway. She clicks the thing back on. <sighs> so, Mr. Brown, you were attending at the wedding. Did you hear anything amounting to criminal conspiracy having to do with the assault on Santa Claus in Central Park. Uh, according to Don Cavetti, the two, two pixies had gone downtown and confessed to being the ones who, you know, had hijacked or, you know, uh, vandalized the sled. And the names of these individuals are? Uh, Pixie and Trixie or something like that. I don't mean to be rude. No, they, <laughs> their names are stupid. It's... <laughs> Twinkle and Pinky. There it is, Twinkle and Pinky. That's what I heard. Click, and because I have to fucking work in okay. this department now, mm -hmm. I have to prosecute Twinkle and Pinky. I still law. These are still people. It is a, I live in a fucking cartoon now. You don't live. This is not a cartoon. Because of you, I live in a fucking cartoon. This is New York City. This is the real thing. Oh, oh, oh a horsewoman just brought you a cup of water, and these two pixies I gotta put away for attacking. She's the a sandwich. goddamn centaur. I go through, I would say, half a bottle of whiskey every night just to get to that the That is so day. bad for you. You have <laughs> to come see me. And oh, I... what, so you can do your magic hands? I don't want to fight with you. I was on track to be the, the district attorney. I was on track to be somebody. And now I'm here. I had to watch them fingerprint a pile of shit <laughs> today. <laughs> Do you know how unpleasant that is to watch? I can only imagine. I, Liz, what do you want me to say, all right? I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I fell in love with you. I'm sorry you fell in love with me. I'm sorry we were married. I'm sorry it didn't work out. I'm sorry I brought you into all of this. What do you want me to say? And please don't call me Mr. Brown. Clay. Mr. Brown, thank you very much for your time. Oh, ice cream. Great. I'll see you later. Call me if you need anything, and tell that pile of shit I'll get cut grass down here. <laughs> Our lives suck so bad. Oh my God. You can't do a campaign about New York City <laughs> and have people's lives not be truly fucking miserable. Uh, incredible. Greatest city in the world! <laughs> awesome. We're going to cut over now to Sophia. Uh, what does Sophia get up to after the bodega? Okay, well, um... First off, I'm starting to sober up. I think I go to a drugstore. Um, I'm trying on some sunglasses. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'm impulse shopping some uh, Christmas stuff. Because <laughs> <laughs> they have, like, you know, a nice display. And mm. it, yeah, when you are missing something in your life, you try to replace it with material items. Anyways, I text my brother and I say, Mario, I'm heading back to uh, Staten Island. Uh, I need to talk to you. Um, you see, he gets a text back and says, missed you last night. Sure, let's talk. Okay. Um, so I think that's my objective. Uh, I take my huge bag of Christmas stuff. <laughs> and then while I'm on the ferry, I also want to try to meditate for the first time. Actually, oh, you know what I also do at the drugstore? Are there any self-help books? Um, <laughs> you start looking at these self-help books. Uh, make a perception check for me. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Okay, 
11. <laughs> uh, you don't notice it, um, uh, but you hear a voice behind you go, uh, don't look at all that stuff. That's all fucking trash. You don't need that. Did you turn around? Who's there? Um, you see a guy with a little shopping cart in his hands. He's like a five foot four, uh, extremely built older uh, guy. Um, you see, he's he's uh, uh, looks like he's probably in his late fifties, early sixties. Uh, Chinese American guy. He's got a Mets windbreaker on and a little Mets hat. Um, and you see that he has the, like very comfy kind of athletic sandals and socks. Uh, you see, he's got some stuff in there. It looks like rash cream and ointment and stuff in his Jesus. basket. Wow, um, this is it. I never thought how intimate it is to run into someone at the drugstore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he sees you looking at it. Um, uh, oh, uh, well, uh, you know, honestly, I may look on the outside very put together, um, but that's because I'm an esthetician. Truthfully, I... I uh, I, I want to make some changes. I don't know if that means I need to be like journaling or like, uh, you know, meditating or something like that. So I just was interested in a book. It doesn't mean you're a bad person if you turn to self-help books. You see, he shrugs and goes, I mean, listen, meditation is maybe the most important practice one can partake in. Center oneself, become aware. I, I get that 100%. It's just that these books are commerce. They're not real wisdom. You know what I mean? Then how am I supposed to learn how to meditate? A podcast or what? Or get one of those little apps? That's commerce as well. You see, he looks and goes, <sighs> forget it. Do what you're going to do. Hey, it is what it is. And you see that he walks. You sound real familiar. Someone recently told me it is what it is. You see, he turns around and looks back at you and says, the fuck you talk, fuck you, I didn't talk to you. You see that a whisper of sparkles appears around him and over his shoulders that he can't see, Legrand Gata's eyes appear and wink at you. He goes, fuck you, what's your fucking problem? I don't know, what's your fucking problem? <laughs> also, what's your fucking name? My name's fucking Jackson, what's your fucking name? My fucking name is Sophia. He Please. says, uh, I mean, Sophia, <clears throat> Bicicleta. He says, so why'd you stutter? What'd you say before that? I said, I said my, uh, whatever the opposite, I said my married name. I was married. I uh, was Sophia Lee. I'm not anymore. You see, now, I'm a, now I'm the crazy old woman who's got looks... a cat she loves and is shopping for self-help books at a drugstore and I got a pocket full of Santas that spit up colorful red and green M&Ms. <laughs> Jesus oh Christ, my God. I didn't ask for your whole fucking life story. <laughs> you asked what's my fucking problem. <laughs> um, you see that he looks at you, um, he looks at you and says, Sophia Lee. Huh? Sophia Lee, I'm, I'm getting into the M&Ms. Uh, you see that he looks at you and says, you're a fucking mess. What the fuck you crying for? I don't know. You have, he says, Honestly, I didn't sleep well. I didn't sleep at all last night. Uh, you see, he looks at you and puts down his basket. As you go to eat something else, he, lightning fast, you can't even see his hand move, snatches it out from in front of your mouth. Oh my God, I got the sharing size. You could have just asked for some. He leans back, kicks your basket up into the <laughs> air, and all the candy scatters everywhere and goes, <sighs> Okay, I fight him. <laughs> um, uh, All right, I take my earrings out, I take my face off, I shimmy out of my face. I do shit. this. Um, you see that he says, you fuck, you fucking get left by some guy, you fucking get a little bit sad, and all of a sudden you're gonna plow into some chocolate. That was some fucking self-respect. <laughs> um, and you see, he just boxes your fucking ears. Um, uh, go ahead and give me uh, an attack. Give me some attack rolls. Oh my god, I want to fucking do well so bad. <laughs> oh yeah, thirteen. Mm -hmm. uh, Twenty-seven. Mm -hmm. Now 20. twenty. So you see that you 
he comes at you. Uh, he plows into your sternum, and you straight up lose two key points. You just, whoo, he like, I only he, had one left for today. He, uh, oh, he, boom, robs you of your <laughs> key points. Uh, boom, as you like stumble back, you see he goes like, fuck, I don't know who the fuck you are, lady, but I, let me tell you right now, you gotta get your fucking, and you spin, roundhouse kick him right in the chin, and you see that he skids back about three feet, sets his jaw back in. <laughs> Jesus. He goes, that's a nice hit, kid. Thank you. And I just want you to know that I wasn't kicking to, I wasn't kicking to kill. <laughs> he says, this was a friendly spa for me. He looks at you and says, yeah, we'll work on that. You see okay. that uh, he, he I goes, guess we fucking will. He looks at you and goes, mm -hmm. you, and you see that Legrand Gata appears on your shoulder uh, and she goes, Jackson way of the order of the concrete fist. This is my chosen. Sophia Lee, or Sophia Bicicleta. You see that uh, he looks and goes, yeah, Sophia Lee, huh? All right. Listen, if you are a chosen of the great cat and you wish to study at the monastery of the Midnight Sun, learn the secrets of our art, I would accept you as a student. But our monastery is extremely challenging to get to. It lies far away in a remote place where only the most dedicated can reach it. Yeah, I know something about that. I'm from Staten Island. Oh, we're in <gasps> Staten Island. Oh, oh, yeah, right. okay. Yeah. No, that's what I was referring to. Oh yeah, my God. the monastery's in Staten Island. Oh, yeah, where? <laughs> How close are you to spaghettis? <laughs> We're literally across the street from spaghetti. I'm there every other day. Oh, God, that's crazy. All right. Oh my yeah, no, that's what the monastery is. It's a Staten Island. Oh, okay. Honestly, people think, you know, people have get, oh, usually guess wrong about where the center of Kung Fu is. In, yeah. No, it's Staten Island. But if you listen to Wu-Tang, there, uh, there is a commitment to Can I show you Staten something? Island. You see, he takes his wallet out and goes through some pictures of his kids and gets a picture of Method Man. <laughs> <laughs> and him sparring in the uh, monastery of the Midnight Sun. Oh my God! He was, he was my best and greatest student. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I'm hoping to give him a run for his money. Honestly, oh, he says we'll see. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, so you see that. Uh, uh, so you take the ferry. Uh, you see that Jackson goes and gets a little uh, cup of coffee and sits next to you, uh, and goes. Uh, so you know. Uh, Tell me a little bit about yourself. You, you, yeah. you have to know that you're, you have a gift. Your, your key power is incredibly strong. Uh, thank you. Um, honestly, until recently, I did not really understand. I mean, I always knew I was like a tough cookie, but I didn't know that, um, that maybe that toughness was coming from something magical. I didn't know about it. I didn't see anything magical for a while, but uh, recently I've been running with quite a magical crowd and <laughs> it's been really helpful for some soul searching. He says, you, you, know, uh, you know Kingston Brown? Yeah. An old friend of mine. I, I, know I Honestly, um, this is gonna drive you crazy, but I was just with him. What? Yeah! Ah, son of a bitch, tell him to come by and visit. No one ever visits Staten Island. I can't, I can't get any of them. I have a huge house and no one will fucking come to it. I have a three bedroom. My, my oldest went off to college yeah. and I'm over here with a spare bedroom. They put a gym in there or an office, uh, you know, I don't know. You think if I, if I have the guest rooms, they'll come stay. They don't. You arrive in Staten Island and uh, walk with Jackson who, uh, you see, immediately has like taken a shine to you. And you keep seeing out of the corner of your eye, never fully manifesting, kind of like spectral or ghostly, Legrand Gata smiling and winking at you. <laughs> uh, can I tell, uh, um, Jackson, can I tell you, um, I, so as you know, I'm, I am a, the chosen of Legrand Gata. Um, Legrand Gata loves you. What's the, oh, well, you know, I'll, I'll explain about what we do. As you guys walk up from the ferry, he says, so I'm part of the order of the concrete fist. We are dedicated to the defense of New York City against those things which break through from the other side. 
we have a number of spiritual practices and there are spirits like La Grande Gata and others that are actually of the magic of the waking world, of the treasures and splendor and wonder of this place. So it's very wonderful that the great cat has smiled on me in that way as she's chosen to smile on you. Yeah. Uh, make an insight check for me. Nine. Um, he gets like a little bit of a sad look in his eye when he looks at you. Um, and you see he just goes, yeah. In any case, I don't think it's an accident that I found you in that drugstore. And I would be very happy to induct you into uh, this monastery. And you see, as you get to this little place across from Spaghetti's, Jesus. Um, <laughs> Spaghetti's Bakery, was it? Yeah. Spaghetti's Bakery. <laughs> we bake the best spaghetti. Um, you see that? Staten Island specialty, <laughs> um, baked spaghetti. Uh, there's a little like three-story kind of apartment building across from Spaghetti's. Um, you see that he, uh, you, get, you get there and you see that um, there's like a little kind of, a little like uh, uh, fire hydrant. And you see that there are two buck metal buckets next to it with one of those like shoulder yokes. Um, you see, he says, uh, all right, kid, you ready for your first test? Uh, I guess so. Uh, my only question would be maybe we we start with meditation, because I, I think I could give you, I'm running on empty right now, and I'm willing to continue to run on empty, but if you want, I could. Yeah, there'll be healing at the top. Okay. You see, he points to a fire escape, and you see that the fire escape goes to the third floor, and then you see kind of, you can see that it keeps going up above the top of the building. And as you follow it, the umbral arcana fades away and you see a, it's like a gray overcast day. The fire escape goes up into the sky. Okay, you want me to climb that bitch? I want you to fill these two buckets with water and bring it up to the top. Okay, yeah, I can do that. I'll see you up there. Jackson jumps straight into the sky. Jesus Christ. I bet I'll be able to do that in like a day. Cool. Uh, so I guess I look for a hose. Uh, yeah, you fill up the two buckets next to this little fire. You see that you can undo the fire hydrant and like right. fill up the buckets. God, okay. Um, and you head off. Um, Pete, we're gonna go over to you. All right. Um, um, cool, what are you up to that day? Uh, I think I'm fucking pissed. Mm -hmm. I think I want to be as intimidating as possible as I just like walk down the street and I'm listening to like uh, fucking the prodigy like blasting out of my wireless <laughs> I'm headphones. A yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, uh, go ahead and make a check for me uh, about like looking over your criminal network or for any like clues about this. Oh, robbery. cool. Like inside or yeah, just actually, just flat? do. I think do a flat charisma check for me. Ah, where's Christmas? Uh, 18. Cool. You begin to like hustle your criminal contacts. Um, do you go to see Priya that day? Uh, so I have a plan. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna get a tattoo because <laughs> I'm. Uh, I need to calm down, mm -hmm. and I've been wanting to find an eight-letter word to go across my fists, and uh, I'm gonna do phantasma <laughs> <laughs> across, so that I'm like freshly tattooed and just like, hey Priya. Oh, weird. Um, it's going to look... F-A-N-T-A-S-M-A. Fuck yeah, very... Um, it's not going to look really cool. You're just going to have, it's like, It's going to look so red and cool. And anyway, I'm definitely <laughs> doing it. So uh, I'm getting that tattoo, and then I text Priya back, like, oh, I happen to be in, like, in the area of this coffee shop. Can you meet up there? And it's, like, the one that we had our first date at. <laughs> <laughs> um, she responds back naturally. Oh, God, this girl's language Damn. is infuriating to me. I hate that. I love it. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So, yeah, I'm getting that tattoo, and then I, um, I think the, I, I think I try to hit up my, like, um, the dealers who work with, like, Wall Street or, like, business people, like, the ones who look very, like, suit and tie and can talk to these people and sell them all, like, drugs. Okay, you're looking for like so like the square most like sooty people in your network. Yeah, yeah, that could, that might know of Robert or have sold around him or something like cool. that. And I'm like getting a fucking sick ass tattoo and, and bleeding. Um, you get a fucking dope ass tattoo. It's like that crazy like playing card font. You know what exactly. I mean? Like yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I get yeah, you. Yeah. I get you. Phantasma. Phantasma. <laughs> 
Um, what does wait, quiet no, asthma no, mean? Fan- do you have asthma? Do you mm-hmm. misspell the word asthma? No, I don't have asthma, okay? <laughs> I smoke all the fucking time. <laughs> What's a fant? <laughs> what, what are the letters in precisely? F A N T. Oh, okay, so it's with an F. It's with mm-hmm. an F instead of PH, yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, awesome. uh, yeah. So um, you arrive at the coffee shop. You've started to kind of put your feelers out. <laughs> Um, and you see Priya is there. She looks gorgeous. She's in this enormous green army jacket. Her hair is kind of over one side, beautiful nose piercing. Uh, she's got this like weird little shredded undershirt uh, that has a picture of like a weird cartoon mouse saying kill me and paint spattered skinny jeans. And you see she goes, oh, Peter. Hmm. Do you have some new ink on your fingers? Oh, yeah, I've been getting some new tattoos. Uh, how are you? You know that Phantasma is spelled with a PH, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, not this one. No. <laughs> <laughs> so she nods and says, Would you like some coffee? Hmm? Would you like some coffee? Uh, yeah, I'll probably get some coffee. How are you? How are you? You look great. How are you doing? Um, <laughs> well, I'm very sleepless at the moment. I have a big gallery showing on the 30th, and <sighs> I am just absolutely inundated. As usual, I've said yes to everything when I should have said no, and mm. there's just too much going on. How about you, darling? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm good. Um, uh, can I roll insight and just yeah. see like what's going on here? <laughs> sure, go for it. 11 with... Uh, da, 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 da. 16. Um, she's a little bit inscrutable. Um, you think that there's like stuff she's sort of not saying. Um, you see, she goes, well, listen, I, I'd heard through the grapevine that you were homeless at the moment, and I wanted to make sure that everything was all right because I know that things didn't end well between us, but I still do care about your well-being. I want you to be safe. Oh, that's fucking really nice of you. Ah, oh, thanks. I'm like maybe gonna cry and I'm like, I'm gonna go get the coffee really quick. Please take your time. Mm. Absolutely. I get the coffee and I um <laughs> hold all the tears. You walk back. Out, you walk out, you go, there's a, the barista is this like enormous jacked dude with a handlebar mustache and a neck tat. And you see he goes, Hey man, um uh you wanna you wanna pour over and we have a little booth around the corner if you wanna go do that real quick. I'll cover for you. Uh, wait, what the fuck? Do you need to go cry? There's a cry booth? Yeah. We're all about it here. <laughs> um, that's Probably. really nice, but I actually wasn't gonna fucking cry, so I'll just take that pour over. <laughs> <laughs> you see, he goes like, hey, dog, everyone's relationship to their masculinity is a journey, and I get that, but this right here fucking kills What me. makes you think I'm gonna cry, dude? <laughs> Dude, my fucking dad died at fucking 67 because he never fucking let it out. And stress clogs your arteries, dude. It's a fucking medical condition. Uh, where's the booth, man? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he brings you around to a booth. I just let go in the booth. I'm like heaving. Uh, he comes over and holds you at a certain point and he starts crying. <laughs> Fuck, dude. It's rough, That's man. fucking insane. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I get my pour over. I'm back to Priya. I look great. She goes, so everything, everything's all right. Huh? Everything's all right. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, the, he mistimed okay. the pour over. Um, you, that's so nice of you. Um, <laughs> that's so nice of you to offer. I do actually have a place to live. I have a really good new uh, mentor and friend in my life. Who that's wonderful. Really cool. Yeah. I asked you to come here because um, I had a dream about you. <laughs> Um, I had this insane dream, like I was talking to a man on a giant clock who was like a broken glass man, and I saw you and you were there and you started to run away and he was dancing and I talked with my therapist about that and she basically said to me, you are on a clock because the time is now for you to resettle what your relationship to Peter was because even though it didn't work out, he still means something to you and 
and you see that she slides a hand onto your knee and says, I think that there might be a role that we have yet to play in each other's lives. And I want to discover what that is, and I want to discover it with you. Uh, I am dating a lot of people. Um, but... She says, no, I don't want to get back together with you. Oh, cool, because, again, all the people that I am dating. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, to just like be more in each other's lives. Uh, you know, I'm gonna need to think about that. Um, Can I ask something? Mm -hmm. It's just one favor that I want to ask. Yeah. Think about it. Mm -hmm. And can you... I'm nervous about my opening. Would you come to my gallery opening on the 30th and we can talk about it there? Sure, yeah, I would love to. Do you have like a flyer or something or is there like an event uh, um, story I can screenshot? No, what's happening is we, we actually only have one invitation and it's being forwarded from person to person. And each time they do, they're gonna take a Polaroid of the exchange of That's cool, that's really cool. Um, okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> man, <laughs> the art world, it, it makes sense. And, <laughs> it, and it's very new, it's always new. Um, oh, well that's so great, Priya. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be at your show though. Uh, like, there, I wouldn't miss, ah, miss for the world. <laughs> I wouldn't miss it for the world. Wonderful. Um, I'm going to leave now, Peter. I'm, I was also gonna leave. All right. Race ya. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll let you leave first. Hmm? You can go. So you can watch me go. <laughs> I like flex my back as I'm walking. <laughs> uh, and Pete walks out of the coffee shop. Cool. <laughs> oh my god, we are all such Everyone's rejects. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, cool. A couple of real quick things. Um, uh, Kingston, mm -hmm. um, as you are leaving City Hall to go back to work, uh, Epona comes up to you. Right. Um, and basically says, hey, uh, I wanted to talk to you real quick, Kingston, if I could. Yeah. Uh, look, I was wondering if um, that, th there was some people with you that I didn't recognize before. There was the firefighter and that young woman. Yeah, Ricky. Yeah. And that young kid. Uh-huh. Uh, hey. Who, who are these, uh, these, who are these guys? A new friend. Uh, they're all, uh. Give me an insight check. Great. Uh, <laughs> 19. Um, you just think it's, a, there's just a weird thing where Epona's talking to you outside of City Hall while this mm -hmm. is happening. Um, mm. And not talking to you in any of the like rooms that you were in where stuff was being like officially recorded. Mm -hmm. um, she says like, yeah, so this, what well, you said, Ricky and what was it the name you said? Yeah, they're all new people. Would you, would you prefer if we went inside and had a chat about this? No, it's, no, it just no, no. feels informal, you know, to be talking out here. She you know, says, seeing as you're, you know, officer and I'm a citizen. You see, she says, no, oh, man, I'm not trying to bust your balls or nothing. I just want to know about the, the kid just because it seems like, you know, if we can collect statements from them or anything like that, or honestly, if you even uh, tell me where I can find this kid, I'll actually be able to go and just talk to him myself. Oh, why would you need to do that? I mean, why can't they just come downtown? You know, this just feels like, you know, what can I say? I'm one for everyone needs to do their civic duty and they should do it civically. So, uh, you know, I'll just send them down to City Hall. How about that? She looks at you, nods and says, that sounds all right. If you want to give them my information, I'd appreciate that, Kingston. Of course. Um, and Kingston walks away. Um, uh, we're going to scoot over now to Ricky, uh, you're over at the firehouse. Uh, you're hanging out, having a ball. Um, uh, having a great ball. time. Having a great time. <laughs> um, Literally playing with a ball because you're a dog um, now. <laughs> um, you're pro pro like looking over at your phone over like texts from Esther. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and you see um, uh, some, you know, looking at her last picture, it's like very curt. You see that there's three firefighters all named John. The Johns. With the Johns, yeah. yeah. Um, you see the Johns are all kind of like lifting weights and one's making a protein smoothie and the other one's doing sit-ups. And you see they all look over and you see one of them goes, hey Rick, what you looking at over there on your phone, man? Oh, I just, uh, just going up, looking at my text. 
you see they all look at each other and go, text from a girl. Ooh, <laughs> come on, man. They're all so jacked. Uh, <laughs> they come over and start shoving you, and they're like, come, ah, on. come on. Come on, come on, come on, man. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, come on. Like, we were gonna go to AC last weekend, and you were like, not about it. And like, what's going on, man? Look, they're, you know, just, uh, Dexton with this girl. Uh, All of them pull up chairs and sit them backwards and go like, talk to me, bro. What's she saying? Um, well, I, I think we're just kind of different. And uh, I'm just trying to, you know, find some middle mm -hmm. ground, be you know, on the same. How way, so? Um, Is she like a different sign than you, incompatible? Or are you like, I mean, talk to me, like, talk to me, man. Like, she's very, she's so smart. And I'm, you know, I, we all have look a different. nod at each other. You know, uh, she's uh, more of a learned, Person and I'm trying to become a learned person, because uh, you know, <sighs> bro, I feel that. Because mm -hmm. here's the thing, man. It's fucking hard in this world for any educated person, let alone. I mean, is this? Are you talking like she's like smart? You mean like educated, like academic? Academic, yeah. You yeah. see that one of the Johns looks at you and goes, "Bro, I'm gonna tell you straight right now." That's a hard obstacle to overcome because a woman trying to make it in academia is overcoming so many hurdles and obstacles. Exactly. And honestly, that is a fucking challenge, bro. Yeah. I'm just doing a big fly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. You see that uh, one of them is doing one arm pull ups and is just like, so like, talk to me. Jesus. Like, are you getting a vibe from this chick? Or is it like, do you think that she like f doesn't feel that way about you? You know, I. We're, we're, there are moments when I feel like there's some sort of vibe going on, but overall, uh, she's pretty much about her business, which is something I really respect. But, you know. Dude, I respect that. I respect that. I respect that too, man. That's so respectable. Yeah. You know, I'm not really worried about it right now. You see, they all nod and they go, honestly, dude, that's awesome. Because here's the thing, man. Like, if you have feelings for somebody mm -hmm. and you feel that you are attracted to them, that attraction is a form of respect. There's something about them that you find beautiful. And if you respect somebody, fuck, dude, you have to let them go. Yeah. Right? You see the other one's like, and you see that uh, the fire chief walks in and goes like, who's by the alarm right now? You're all out in here working out? Um, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah. Uh, you guys sort of tumble out of there. Um, you guys start to get a little, little text back and forth. Um, uh, uh, from Alejandro and Esther being like, we want to have that meeting tonight as sort of tonight rolls around. Salad's at my place. <laughs> hmm. uh, cool. You guys arrived there. Um, uh, is Sophia going or do you want to go talk to Mario? I do want to talk to Mario, but I mean, did I make it to the top <laughs> of the ladder? <laughs> Um, uh, yes, you did. Yes! Uh, at the top of the ladder, this enormous awesome monastery in the clouds is there. Uh, you see, it's all gray. The walls look like they're made of sidewalk material, like those big sidewalk squares with like gum on them. And you see that because, you're like, oh, everything here is made of sidewalk or floor. Um, uh, and you see, because it all looks like that, the monks are able to walk on walls ah! because the walls are, f everything here is floor. I put my foot to a wall. Can I walk on it? Uh, you can walk on it. And the <laughs> gravity shifts. Um, <laughs> Uh, and you see there's tons of uh, other monks here who are training who look and smile at you as you walk in. Um, you see that there is this incredible um, yin and yang symbol up. Uh, the yin yang is made of not black and white though. There is a golden half that is speckled with grime and soot. And then there's an incredible like purple, pink, blue half with like star energy in it. Um, you see that Jackson looks over at you and goes, <sighs> and there it is, the dreaming and the waking world. <sighs> Let's get your training started, kid. Um, you heal, but uh, you are healed by your presence in the monastery, but then also just spend a whole day fucking training in all these awesome martial arts. Uh, um, this is too cool. I text Mario and I'm like, rain check. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, um, it's super pressing that we talk and it is really important. If you're in Manhattan, please let me know, but for now, rain check. Um, yeah, cool, you don't get no response back. Uh, Jackson is awesome. The first thing he works with you on is he gets all the other students to pile into this room and they start walking like a crowd. He puts a bucket of water on your head and says, 
All right, crowd of people, Penn Station, rush hour. What are you gonna do? Oh, you gotta get. I can do this. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you just do these sprints through a crowd of people with can a bucket of. Can we say that part of the reason I do it well is because I got really good hip movements? <laughs> <laughs> um, you see, he goes, great hip movements out there. Your center of gravity's great. Watch your hands. You're sloppy with your hands. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. He sorry. says, you're always talking with your hands. Keep your hands to your side. Um, That's a good point. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and he starts to drill you in this awesome New York kung fu. Yeah. Um, uh, you... Uh, transfer to that day. Um, uh, I th so Alejandro, I think, probably uh, calls up uh, Ricky, Kingston, Misty, and Cugrash. Um, uh, but Sophia also heard about it. So if Sophia wants to go, she can go as well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deferentially uh, refer to Jackson and say, I have an, I have an invitation from Kingston to talk some shop. Um, I'm cool to stay here and train. However, if you prefer me lend my services there, I can also do that. He says, kid, you put in a hard day's work, all right? Go for it. All and right. He says, um, uh, he says, but remember, we'll start working on meditation tomorrow, all right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start uh, doing it on the uh, ferry. I got, <laughs> I got these really big sunglasses so I can close my eyes and no one will know I'm meditating. <laughs> uh, he nods. <laughs> Um, you head off, you guys get to the meeting place with Alejandro. Um, you see that he looks around at you guys. Esther's there as well. Uh, Pete is not here, but he looks at the other five of you and goes, um, friends of the Gramercy of Gold Society, thank you for answering this message. Um, congratulations as well to Sophia for, uh, being our newest member of the Unsleeping City and joining uh, the Monastery of the Midnight Sun. In the Ooh, order of the you went around feast. with Jackson? <laughs> yes, he speaks very highly of you. He, well, he was I'll, asking for you. I'll tell you, that man did damage in the 90s. Alejandro looks around and says, uh, the presence of the Vox Phantasma um, begs a question. There have in the past been Vox Fantas... My? Fantasmas? Fantasmas? Fantas... Fantasmas us. Thank I'm you. gonna say it's an English word and we're gonna say Fantasmas. Thank you. It's not a Latin... We're not speaking Latin here. No, we are not. Language is mutable, you know? It's a beautiful thing and we should use there it as... Misty, sit down. <laughs> sit down. Sit down. You don't need to stand up. Um, <laughs> Uh, you see that um, uh, Alejandro looks out and says, there is uh, a version of the fight that happened in Historia that goes a very different way. I want to offer forward the question of what should be done if young Peter loses control of his magic in a way that is even more dangerous than what we have already seen. I mean, I'm certainly worried about it. I'm wondering, actually, if your friend Jackson can help. He's such a centered man, focused oh. on meditation. Jackson was really cool. I'd love to spend more time with him. Should I text him? This is a great first reason for to text him. Jackson. I, I mean, here's the truth, Alejandro. If things get out of hand, we put him down. What? You said uh, straight up. I I think uh, uh I have kids. I have kids. What? I um fucked up. I you fucked have rat up raising. Kids? No, I, the rats? I was you, you know I was rat? a human. You know yeah. I was a human. Oh, you have human kids. Yes, I have human kids and I've I've made this mistake before of overlooking people and and making them angry and bitter. And we need, Pete should be part of this discussion. You know what, Cug is right. Cug is right because if you mess up someone's hair, you don't just, like if you fry someone's hair, uh, uh, dyeing it, you don't just shave their head. You do like a deep uh, conditioning yes, treatment. The problem is we are not talking about hair. We're not talking about your kids. We're talking about 
the entire population of New York City. Now, if you're asking me to choose between New York City or Pete, 10 out of 10 times, I choose New York City. Can I'm you... just saying maybe we should consider locking him in some kind of magical cave for eternity. Okay, maybe we don't have to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you see, to. Alejandro goes, Mister, you cannot keep suggesting to lock people in caves. <laughs> it's a useful tool. I'm just saying. You were saying. trying to get us to lock the mummy in a cave yeah. for a long time. Yeah. I saw one time when you were at the first Sephora that opened up in New York City, and oh the person God. wouldn't let you speak to a manager, and you demanded to lock them in a giant crystal cave. Um, those stores are confusing, and I don't know what's good. I need some help. I, I, man, and they don't clean the brushes properly. <laughs> oh, they don't? That's no. why I always get pink eye from it. Um, I wanted to know, why, just so I can better understand the situation, why would the, is there a reason that uh, the, the inhabitants of the Vox Phantasma would want to come here? You see that, uh, you see that, um, What's uh, wrong with what they got see, going on? see how says, when you continue your training, you should ask Jackson about that. Okay. The, the order of the concrete fist was created because of the danger represented by the realms of dreaming. It was the response of a waking world constantly besieged by the forces beyond. In dream, things are insubstantial, chimeric, and ephemeral. Acts of sudden change and chaos in the realms of dream do not fundamentally alter the nature of that plane. But when raw, pure magic enters forth into the waking world, as often as it creates wonder or joy, it creates destruction and chaos. It is not fair to the people who have come to this city or been born here and lived here their entire lives that their well-being, safety, and in fact, even their life or death should be thrown into chaos because of what amounts to often a joke. The spirits of dreaming are frenzied and wild, and you can even see from Peter, the sense of weight or gravity of his actions escapes him. When a Vox Phantasma comes to New York, in the case of Josephina Gatsby, which you knew. Oh, so fun. She manifested dreaming through delight and wonder and whimsy. Peter actively courts the darkness more than the light, and the realm of dream has much in the way of destruction to offer. If Peter treads his path recklessly, he could become something far more dangerous than we have the capacity to handle. Okay, so we just replace all his drugs with Tic Tacs. Right? I, I, I mean, I, I think that's we're giving, obvious. We're giving Pete something to rebel against. Yeah, we're having Pete's a meeting got... without him. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, okay, yeah. well, we need, I'm okay. Let's get Pete No, here. you need to, no, hold on. Y'all okay. need to slow down, all right? Because I get it. I get that you feel that Pete is being left out and thus he thinks he needs to rebel. He is already rebelling without that. So my, uh, so we need, we do need to have this meeting. We do need to have this space because we need to decide how we are acting towards him. Yeah, I'm a big fan of mischief, obviously, personally myself, but there's a difference between mischief and danger, and I do need this city to be stable enough for, for your show to come Honestly, out. for theater to happen yeah. because otherwise I can't live. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm there's not for, a lot of art during uncertain times. Truly, I, I'm all for keeping. New York safe, but that includes Pete in my mind. Again, so. just a magical cave. We can make it a nice cave. All right. You see that? Uh, you see that? Esther, <laughs> Esther looks up and looks at you, Kingston, and goes, "I agree with Kingston." He, when Kingston speaks, he speaks for the people of this city, and I think Pete is a swell guy. I've also seen him multiple times attempt to sell drugs to children. And we would be really foolish not to acknowledge the danger. Why don't we let Alejandro hit the books? I will as well. And we can see if there, I'm not saying Crystal Cave, but I'm saying some magical remedies to our situation, maybe something that can at least lessen Pete's level of power 
while he's learning about himself. Can, can I just interject, because I'm in a somewhat similar situation to Pete here, which is that this is all very new to me, and it's all very w overwhelming. So magic feels really old hat and normal to you guys, but to him, he's, he's, he's barely just beginning to grasp it. So it, it's not the same as like mishandling magic that he's known all his life. It's, it's mishandling magic that he learned about a couple days ago. So I, I think that it, there's gotta be more of a grace window for someone. Alejandro, uh, make a make a persuasion check with advantage. Okay. Um, <clears throat> eighteen. Alejandro takes the little jewel out of his jacket and looks at it, and you see his eyes water up a little bit, and he says, "Sophia, I think you are absolutely right. There is research to be done. Pete has only known of his powers for a few days." I would ask that we keep these a secret from him for the time being. All of us are very busy. You have no training. You have your ward over the city. The rest of you, of course, have your own duties and responsibilities to tend to. We will be in touch in a few days' time. Um, All I'm saying is Merlin, after a couple of hundred years, was happier. <laughs> I, I cannot hear about this crystal cave <laughs> one more time! Um, uh, you see that uh, <laughs> um, you guys head off. Uh, a few days of downtime passed. You're training. You're do. Uh, you, all you guys are, were plenty busy before the weekend from hell. Pete, you in your searches a couple days after that, you get a call from one of your suit buddies, saying, um, uh, "I know where the guy's gonna be." I'm, I'm talking to him, right? Yeah. You're okay. Talking to him. It's like, uh, hey man, uh, if you're looking for Robert. Um, if you want to get a beat on him or you want to talk to him, I know where he's going to be. I have a card with his address on it. Is this the same address? Uh, the guy says, yeah, you could probably also spot him there if you wanted to. Mm. Okay, where's he going to be? Uh, he's like, uh, a party up in Hell's Kitchen. Cool. Uh, nice. Uh, what's he like? Like, what's, uh, what's his... You see, he says... Who is uh, he? He says, uh, uh, big finance guy. Uh, old, old power behind the throne in Wall Street circles. But is he known for anything? Is he, like, brutal? Does he have... Uh, you see, he says, he says he's, he's like, uh, no, he's not brutal. He's, uh, he's a, a smooth operator and a pretty easy guy to talk to, actually. Hmm. Fucker. Okay. <laughs> Uh, thanks, man. Um, cool. Uh, uh, so Pete has his info on this dude. What's Pete gonna do? Uh, can I try to talk to Alejandro's daughters? Sure, yeah, you can text them. Cool. I'm like, hey, your dad, I hate it when men yell at me. Can I talk to you? <laughs> you see, they both, they both text you back in this group chain, and one of them sends a gif of someone rolling over laughing, <laughs> and another one sends something of a very old man falling over in a walker with fail under it. <laughs> and they, you see, one of them says, g sucks, what up? Yeah, okay, cool. I try to meet up with them, because I have a bunch of questions. Um, cool. Um, you meet up with them. Uh, you to meet up on a corner. Um, uh, you see... Yeah, they, they arrive and meet, meet on a street corner. Okay, do they know, like, do you guys know anything about Vox Phantasma or, like, what's going on or? We can, like, look stuff up if you want. So the one who looks over and says, yeah, um, Grandpa's super pissed. Yeah. I, I would probably not hang out with him much in the future. What do you mean? He hasn't calmed down? It's been, like, a week. Um, you see, they say, look, Pete, we think you're awesome, and just like be careful, okay? What? Why? The society has to come first. <laughs> they vanish. Um, make a perception check for me. Okay. Twenty. Now twenty. Jesus. Uh, there is a car idling, a black town car idling at the street corner, um, and you see that its doors unlock. I walk towards it. Fuck. Um, a door, a back door opens up. I mean, I don't get in. I like kind of have my gun. Cool. <laughs> and I'm like, what's right. up? Um, you hear a voice from inside go, 
friends let you down, huh, kid? I say, who are you? My name's Robert Moses. If you want to figure it out, why don't you hop in? We'll take a ride. I say, fuck you, <laughs> and I run. I'm sick of all these men in my life. <laughs> I don't have a home to go to. Uh, I think I go to an Equinox uh, for a free trial. <laughs> cool. uh, you start, uh, as you start to run, um, you see that he gets out of the back seat of the car and stands, you see he says, I like to talk in a town car, but you see he says, if that makes you uncomfortable, I'd be happy to talk somewhere else. You have been running me down through your criminal network, so I thought you'd like the opportunity to speak. How do you know everything? All right, you can come to this Equinox, too. <laughs> uh, he starts walking with you down the street. Get on the elliptical. Uh, <laughs> Get uh, a date and peanut butter smoothie. Uh, he starts walking with you down the street. Um, uh, you see, he starts walking and he goes, uh, well, while we're heading to Equinox, uh, he says, you want a Cubano, my friend? Uh, yeah, I take you. Um, you Can see, I, like, check it? Yeah, I'll go for it. Yeah, check it. Eight. Uh, seems fine to you. All right. Um, you see that he says, here you go, and takes an old match case out and lights up a match and holds it to light the cigar. He walks along with you and goes, well, uh, I want to apologize. I think we got off on the wrong foot. How did you know that thing about my dad? I make it my business to know these things, and I don't know if this is going to catch you off guard, but you're not the most subtle box phantasm there's ever been. What? Well, OK, I have a lot of questions. What happened with my dad? Did I cause that? In a sense, yeah, you did. Hmm. You, um, you got fucked, kid. I'm sorry. What do you mean? Well, did you sign up for this Vox Phantasma job? Did you weigh the health benefits? Did you get a choice in the matter? No. No. Does it suck to be the Vox Phantasma? What do you think? You're homeless? You got a bunch of problems? Um, That's just New York. You see that he <laughs> holds out a camera and plays something on his phone and shows it to you, you see a security cam footage from the Gramercy Occult Society and see Kingston talking oh, about fuck. killing you. And you see Alejandro and Esther I mean, weighing that problem. option. If things get out of hand, we put him down. We're talking that's about not real. The entire population of no, New that's City not now. real. You're a call, kid. No. Uh, I text Kingston, hey, uh, what up? <laughs> What's going on, Pete? Um, <laughs> he, he walks with you a little while. Um, you see that he goes, um, you text him Kingston Brown? Why? He, he, how do you know everything? God damn it. Um, all right. Uh, he's my friend, man. He, I, that must have been out of context or something um, like that. Uh, you see that he, uh, turns around. Uh, you are suddenly standing sort of outside this like very big looking sort of like nightclub place. Um, you see that he goes, um, uh, well, as another Vox, you should know Kingston Brown's the biggest schmuck there ever was. You're a Vox also? No, hell no. I don't do a job unless I'm getting paid. I'm not getting paid for this. No, you're not. God damn it. Look, kiddo, you're a businessman. I get you. You're an entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you see, I am. Um, you see that he opens this door and walks into this nightclub, and you see it is filled with vampires. And there are a bunch of humans everywhere who are, like, having their um, blood drunk around you. And you see that he looks and says, you get it, right? They think you're some kind of threat or something like that. Everybody here chose to be here. All these humans, you see people again looking like haunted and empty. They all want to be here. What are, what are you doing? What's happening with them? Well, they need money. And these vampires need blood. So they're selling their blood to these vampires? Look, you get it. 
I didn't create the demand. People did. Um, fuck. I'm so pissed. Uh, I text the group, uh, <laughs> the nightclub that we're at. Cool. With the address. Um, you see as he walks through with you, he uh, looks and says, um, there's nothing wrong with you using these powers for yourself. You don't owe anything to anybody, all right? This city is the gateway to the American dream, kid. Rags to riches, making something of yourself. That's your story, and it's my story, too. It's that little gray kid. They put this curse on you. It's this little gray kid that made you this thing against your will. What? Why me? And who is the baby? Nod. Yeah. Um, you see that he walks in a little bit further, um, and, uh, he says, um, so, here's what I'm thinking. If you want to make money, I want to take care of my business and protect my interests. So, why don't both of us do each other a favor and talk to this little gray kid and see what the story is? Is the gray kid here? Could be. I can't get the gray kid to come here, but you're the Vox Phantasma. God damn it. Um, I look at my phone to see if there are any texts from any of the I group. I would like to text yeah, yeah, I'm on my way, yeah. I don't have anyone. I don't have anything else going on. I was standing in front of the mailbox trying All right, to open. Yeah, a lot of people have been hitting me back like yeah. that they're interested. So I'm going to be like, that sounds really interesting. I'm going to think on it and get a cocktail across the street at my favorite bar. Uh. Um, he nods. And as you turn around, you see that there's a large mirror in the nightclub. You see in the mirror, as you turn to look, you see that you have no reflection and where your reflection <gasps> should be is Nod, who looks around and goes, <gasps> you see Robert raises his hand, a seam opens in his wrist and a rope of blood shoots out of his arm around the child and he rips the child out of the mirror as it skids onto the floor in front of you. Okay, I point a uh, true strike at Robert, mm -hmm. so hopefully that will activate next turn. Yes. And I like lunge to grab the baby as like my own. Um, what is the emotion you're feeling towards the baby? Protection, full protection. Uh, you grab it. Uh, roll for wild magic surge. Two. <laughs> you go. Hold on a second. Wait, two is... Uh, no, 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 I've already done so many. Every, yeah. every um, time they you roll. You grab the child. You see that nod immediately. Um, its skin starts to like crack as it is pulled out of the dream world. It, goes, <gasps> it starts to die, and you glow with every color that has ever been. You fill the nightclub, incinerate about 20 vampires around you, yes. and Robert is flung backwards. Boom! Um, you see that um, uh, Nah looks at you and goes, I knew I chose right, and kisses your cheek and you teleport away. What? And you are standing in the Lorimer Street subway stop. Fuck. Far the fuck away from that bad place. Your wild magic surges and Nod is dying in your arms. Fuck. Um, um, but, but still alive. Um, uh, you have service here if you need to text these guys. Okay, I retext. Now I'm at the Lorimer. Like, this is an emergency. We got okay. to turn around. <laughs> turn into the fastest day. So far away. Like, um, I, yeah. I try to get the ferry driver to make a detour. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, guys all, you guys all descend on the Lorimer stop. It's from all the corners of the city. You <laughs> hoof it there as fast as you can. Um, uh, are uh, we on the G stop or the nice. L stop on the Lorimer? You, well, the, you are on the L. Oh, the L stop on the Lorimer. Okay. Um, uh, yes, uh, 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 what does Misty uh, uh, say as, what, what, do any of you text each other after that text of being on that stop? Um, uh, G stop or L stop? G stop or L stop? Which, okay. which, which am I going left or right as I come down uh, the stairs? You get a text from Alejandro saying L stop, L stop. Um, do you do you mention that Wait, you have not? Wait, Brooklyn bound or Canossie Canossie bound and then Adam You remember? Uh, well, Misty, you remember the L train Canarsie goes bound to the goes to Dream Sleeping City. The, goes, uh, goes, goes to Dreamland. Goes to Dreamland. Yeah. So. 
probably Canarsie Band or okay, Nod Band. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's go to Nod. Um, uh, uh, Alejandro uh, uh, is also on his way. Does anybody, uh, uh, do you guys call anybody else or no? I think I tell Jackson. You tell Jackson? Cool. I probably text Esther, Esther about as well. It. I tell um, Jackson. I probably also, like, in my heart, am like, La Gran Gata, just because I feel like you should know what's going on, but you don't have to come. I know you're busy, but this shit's going down. Um, you guys all arrive. You get to the L train. You see Pete standing there holding this gray child that's like skin is like starting to crack and like wheezing with breath. Um, uh, you also see that um, you all arrive, so yeah, you all arrive there on the train platform together. Uh, Pete, what happened? Okay. I don't know, cure, cure wounds on the uh, baby. Um, cool, you cast cure wounds on the baby. <sighs> see some of the damage is starting to be healed. Uh, Alejandro is there as well and he says, Okay, uh, listen, it's a Friday night, so it's hard to tell when the train, because that particular train to Nod is a little bit tricky. The MTA, the fucking MTA! God, we gotta be in the front two carriages and then move to the back two carriages <laughs> after we get to Canarsie, but it gotta be the front two at the beginning. Alejandro says, okay, I'm going to summon all of my power. His eye goes gold. We must make the MTA run. <laughs> Clocks appear all around him. On time for once! <laughs> Um, uh, you hear another voice, um, uh, hear a voice, clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop, uh, opponent, uh, shows up. She looks up and says, says, oh my god, is everything all right? Honestly, I don't know what the fuck's not, going on. Uh, no, not she says, at all. Uh, can I do a perception check on opponent? Yeah, yeah I would like, like to do that too. Uh, perception, Maybe. I can do it twice? Yeah, do yeah. twice. I got a 17. God. I got it. Yeah, I, I got, got a 11. Perception? Yeah. Uh, oh. I got a, a 29. You see that her police badge is replaced by a different badge than you've ever seen before. It is a shimmering onyx badge, and it is specifically crooked. Zigzags woven into the pattern of the badge. Mm -hmm. uh, Epona, what are you doing here? Because clearly it's not police business. This is bad, right? This is very bad. Uh, Epona, and I cast Suggestion. Wouldn't it be great if I heard there was some shenanigans going on downtown? Um, you see that as you start to cast the spell, the spell is sucked into the badge and steam begins to coalesce and mm. form out of the subway. That's bad. You see, she looks and says, the problem is, Kingston, I am here on police business. Fuck. I'm gonna need all of you to roll initiative. Fuck, fuck, fuck. That's all for this episode of The Unsleeping City. Tune in next week as we have a little rumble in the subway. Hope the trains run on time. See you then. Ah! Fuck. We are here at the Lorna L train stop. Alejandro is casting an incredibly powerful concentration spell to summon the train to not. I'm gonna summon the power of the juicy cockroach and call upon my people, the rats. Cockroach is in his element. Doesn't have to go down like this if you just give me the kid. The steam forms into shadowy spectral officers of the law. New York's bravest versus New York's finest. I think you got what it takes. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, there are millions of people in this city that rely on public transportation to get where they need to go. Cool,